I tū te puehu i tētahi pūrongo i pūrero ake i tēnei wiki, e mea ana nā ngā mihingare e kaha nei te Māori ki te tūkino tamariki. Hei tā etahi ko te pūrongo nei te tauira hei whaiatū mā ngā mātua Māori. Engari kaore te katoa o ngā mātanga i te whakaai. Tokorua o rātou e noho tahiana kia Jauri i tēnei wā. Kia ora, yes. Joining me is Anton Blanc, Director of Te Kahui Mana, Diriki Trust, and historian Paul Moon. Let's start with you, Anton. What exactly is the intention of this report? The report um, was commissioned so that we could look at the history of Māori parenting and see whether we could find, um, whether, whether from there we could source values that would um, be applicable today and from there develop a modern, modern parenting model and that's what we've done. We've looked at our history, um, we've found out what the prevailing um, parenting values were and um, we've developed that into a parenting model for whānau today. But on what grounds did you decide to actually look back into the history of it? Um, that was done because th there are a lot of parenting programs around already um, but what we know from providers of those programs and from Māori Fano who attend those programs is that they're not quite hitting the mark with Māori Fano. And what we know is that Māori, um, as Māori, we want to see our values, um, we want to see ourselves reflected in the programs that we're involved in. So to do that, we went back to our history to find to find those values. Paul Moon, what do you think of this report? I think overall it's a superb report. Um, I think there are some parts of it, in particular the. Um, Tikanga Principles for Parenting, for example, which are inspired, and that should be, I think, compulsory reading for parents. So, by and large, it hits the mark, it's got a good heart, and it draws on those principles Anton's talked about. And, and you have some criticisms of it, though, don't you? Um, I have some concerns regarding some of the source material, um, the approach to history, um, some of the themes that run through it. Um, I think, for example, um, when they're looking at the colonisation period and they're looking at some of the early European comments on Māori parenting, there's a bit of selectivity there and um, perhaps the net wasn't cast as wide as it could have been. Was it cast wide enough for you, Anton? I think it was cast very widely and um, certainly um, what, the, um, what the prevailing view was and what most of the accounts we found were from the missionaries was that they observed um, kind and indulgent parenting by Māori whānau. And I know that Paul has um, um, quoted, um, you know, incidents of child maltreatment, but certainly what the missionaries said was that was uncommon. And the more common observation was of um, collective and kind parenting of, of children. And w what's your take on that? OK, well, I'll give you an example. Um, I think Joel Pollock is one of the people who's quoted in the report. And... Um, the report quotes Pollock citing, a, I think, a Maori father treating his son with kindness and showing affection and so on. And Pollock's described as an astute observer, and that's correct. But then there are other examples from the same book in which um, a girl who ran away from home, came back a few days later, was um, killed by the community and chopped up and eaten. That doesn't appear in it. So it's this sort of, I mean... There are good and bad comments, and I mean the same Do, applies to all. Does it actually matter, though? Yeah. Does it matter today is, what is, happened two hundred years ago? I think this is the moot point: is that we're not denying that those um, those accounts weren't there, but we went in with a specific brief, and that was to f to find what the prevailing um, uh, values about parenting were, um, and. That may be true, but we were looking for something quite specific, and we found it. Well, when, you, yeah. so when you say that, were you actually looking for positive Māori stories, we as were, opposed we to were, violent Māori we, stories? We were looking for, um, we were, like I've already said, we were looking for what are the prevailing patterns and what were the values and beliefs about children. Now, apart from the, um, the accounts um, from the missionaries, we also looked at um, myths and legends and... Um, and birthing ceremonies and lullabies. And, and, on, and how, how does looking at that sort of information actually help us deal with the crisis we face today? Because it gives us a framework to revolutionise Māori parenting and I think that what we have come up with um, has the potential to do exactly that because um, I think that over time we've come to believe that we're inherently violent and when we go back and look at these values, we find a, a completely different model of um, and way of thinking about children and thinking about ourselves. And I believe that by reclaiming that, we can um, set ourselves free 
and we can look forward to a future where children um, live in violence-free whānau. Paul, do you think reports like this actually set Māori up as being the primary abusers of children? Um, well, I think what Anton's just said is absolutely right. I mean, he's drawn, particularly in the myth mythological part of things, he's drawn on a whole lot of principles that up until the time of this report weren't widely known, so it's a huge help. Mm. Um, I don't think it sets up anyone for anything. I do have a concern, though, with the use, and it doesn't appear in this report, but the use generally of that term, married child abuse, because I don't think there is such a thing as married child abuse. I think there's just child abuse, and the problem is when you append the word Māori to it, you start to create a stigma and it, it builds into a stereotype and as Anton said, that's something we've got to move away from. Anton, so what's the solution? What are you recommending? Um, well, we, we, we're now looking for um, organisations to par partner with us and use this model. Um, and on top of that, we see um, media and communications as a really important part of this. So um, we're going to be um, um, using um, television and radio to um, get this message out. Um, and I think over time we will see change. What experts tell us is that in terms of this type of um, social change, we're really looking at a couple of generations. Um, and I believe that if we start now, um, we can um, look forward to that in the not too distant future. Kia ora. Paul, what do you think needs to happen next from your point of view? Well, as far as the report's concerned, um, my hope is that it doesn't end up like a lot of previous reports, well written, well researched and then buried. Um, I think that there needs to be steps in place so that parents can become aware of the principles that are talked about here and, and benefit from it. Let's look into it and continue talking about it. Kia ora, thank you very much, Kia ora. gentlemen.